Hello everyone, Stepan here. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you uh, the round 5 game I played in the Croatian Cup. And uh, this was the, the last game I played. Uh, so after winning the game against Medak, the FIDE master, if you have seen the last video, uh, I was, well, I, I was ecstatic and uh, to be honest I didn't expect to play in round 5 because the tournament is, all, is only 6 rounds and since we managed to beat a higher rated team, it was a big upset in round 4 uh, when, I, when I won against the FM. Then I thought we are going to play a very uh, high rated team in, in round 5 and uh, I basically expected it to be a team with 23-2400 on board 5. And since we now had a chance for, for, for a high uh, ranking at the end of the tournament, I thought the, the main setup, the, the main team composition was going to play. So anyway, uh, when the pairings got out uh, in the evening, uh, we drew uh, a team which wasn't that strong. In fact, it was weaker on every board like, except on board 4, on my board. Of course, if uh, <clears throat> uh, our international master, who usually plays board 4, had played, then we would have been stronger on all four boards. But I got a chance to play. And anyway, uh, we were facing a team with a FIDE master on board 1, uh, two candidate masters on boards uh, 2 and 3, and the candidate master on, on board... Uh, on board four. So uh, Mate, my coach, uh, came to my room and, and told me, calm down, you're playing tomorrow, don't think about today's game, which was of course hard. And I had to concentrate and prepare. And uh, preparation for this opponent was really tough. Uh, his peak rating was about 2250 a few years ago. So he's a very strong player uh, and he plays C4 most of the time. Uh, he he even had some games with one B4 and one G4, uh, the Polish opening and uh, the, I don't know if that's the Grob or something like that. So strange openings, but C4 was his main weapon. So I, uh, well, I usually play C6 against C4, uh, the Karokan defensive system, either entering the Semislav or the Panov Karokan, or if they play something strange with G3, then we enter some Queen Pawn opening position. Uh, but uh, lately I've been preparing a completely new system against the English and I've been working on it a lot. Uh, so when the time to prepare came, I couldn't really decide what I was going to play, which almost never happens. So I had two completely different openings I wanted to play against C4. Spent a long time thinking, looking at the positions, uh, looking at uh, about 100 games of his, of my opponents online, to see how he reacts to both uh, to both openings. And when I saw that to c6, uh, he either enters the exchange Slav, I'm going to show you that. So c4, c6, d4, uh, d5, uh, he will either enter this, which is the uh, Slav exchange variation, uh, or after c4, uh, c6, he, was, uh, he plays g3 and setups with knight to f3, bishop g2, knight c3, which I was okay with. Uh, or, uh, what happened in the game, after c4, c6, he plays e4, which enters the pan of Karokan after d5. So when I saw that these were the options, uh, I, I decided to play c6. And uh, I spent a long time the next day, the game was at 3 p.m., uh, spent a long time analyzing the positions which could arise. Uh, one critical position is uh, whether he plays knight to f3 or not, I'm going to show you that. And uh, the, the most critical line was the pawn of ending with the queen exchange, which I have played already and I know pretty well, but uh, when I sat down with Mate to analyze the position, he told me that he thinks that white is better. He had prepared it for white, I had prepared it for black previously. So we had a discussion about the ending, tried to find some ideas, and uh, what ended up happening in the game was the, the exact variation. So when I sat down on the board, uh, he played c4, I played c6, he quickly played e4, and I quickly played d5. And now the variation is pretty forced, uh, and uh, we both knew it very well, so we both played a tempo, uh, meaning that we wasted almost no time. We played the first 12 moves in about a minute each. So the variation goes e takes d5, <coughs> c takes d5, and now d4. Now you have transposed to the Karokan uh, Panov attack, Panov Botvinnik attack. Black plays knight f6, knight c3, knight c6, and now 
White could choose between two main moves. Knight to f3 is what was played in the game, which I expected. The other variation is bishop to g5, uh, to which black can either respond with e6 or bishop e6. I was going to play bishop e6. The point of this move is to re reinforce d5, and the bishop isn't really misplaced on e6, because the knight will have a hard time dislodging it, because it will take three tempi. Uh, first, the bishop needs to move from g5, and then the knight needs to play f3, g5. So bishop e6 is a fairly logical move, and black continues with g6, bishop g7. So this is one variation which I have prepared in detail. The second one was the move knight to f3, after which uh, we play this forcing line with bishop g4. And uh, after bishop g4, the variation goes cd5, knight d5, queen to b3, putting pressure on the knight, putting pressure on the b-pawn, and white's only response is bishop takes f3, temporarily defending the d5 knight. g takes f3, now both pieces are under pressure once again. And in the only game I played in this variation previously, I played the tricky move knight to b6, which is supposed to be slightly worse for black, but it's hard for white to prove that. And I I had a pawn up position, which I ended up losing because I overlooked something. And anyway, but I got a good, I got a good position. And when I was discussing this with Mate, uh, I know that e6 is the main move and I know the variation and uh, I told him, well, perhaps I should play knight to b6, it seems trickier because I wanted to go for the win. And he told me, no, uh, it's a team event, you need to have a secure position uh, and don't risk anything, so I said, okay. And I played the move e6. Uh, after e6, the variation goes queen takes b7, uh, taking a pawn, but now uh, black can capture on d4, knight takes d4, uh, white plays bishop to b5 check, pairing the threat of knight to c2 and... Uh, Black has nothing better to do but to take, of course, everything else is losing. So knight takes uh, b5. And now, the most precise way for, for white to play isn't to recapture the knight immediately with check, because then uh, black responds with queen to d7. Uh, there is an intermezzo move, uh, queen to c6 check, forcing the knight to, to d7. Of course, now if you play queen d7, then queen takes a8. So king to e7 and queen takes b5. And here I had uh, the first thing of the game. I, I know that queen to d7 is the main move, and that's in fact what I ended up playing afterwards. But I had a long thing be because before the game, I was looking at a game by uh, Vasily Ivanchuk versus Maxim Vasily Legrav, in which uh, Vasily Legrav took on c3. So he, he took knight takes c3, b takes c3, declined the queen trade, and uh, actually lost the pawn afterwards, lost the a7 pawn, which is pretty forced in the variation. But black has a lot of chances in the opening, and uh, black ended up winning, so I liked that variation. But once again, I remembered what Mate had said before the game, and I played queen to d7. I really, uh, well, if it weren't a team event, perhaps I might have risked it with knight x 3 but I didn't really want to be the one who loses uh, points for the team. So queen d7. And this is still the, the main line, queen takes d7, king takes d7, knight takes d5, e takes d5, and this is where the theory... Uh, branches out. Uh, there are several options, and if you look at this position, the material is equal. Black has a permanent weakness on d5, uh, which cannot really be dissolved, uh, and white has a permanent weakness on f3 and f2, which in some cases could be exchanged off, but uh, if black is careful, the doubled pawns are going to be here forever. So a pretty balanced end ending in which uh, Mate and I argued about it for a long time, and um, I think that black is fine, Mate thinks white is slightly better, but yeah, it should be equal with, with good play. And my opponent here started thinking, uh, it's hard for white to gain any advantage here for black too, but he was anxious to win because I'm much lower rated than he is, and yeah, he wanted to win, so he castled here. And now I made a mistake, what I thought was a mistake, and uh, it turned out to be a very good move for some reason. So anyway, uh, I was looking at the positions with my king on e6, and uh, then bishop to c5 is a very strong move, because you don't really want to exchange the bishops if it undoubles white's pawns, of course. If he plays bishop e3, you don't want to take. So bishop c5 doesn't make sense with the king on d7. So bishop c5, bishop d3 uh, would improve white's position, because it's really hard not to capture. And with the king on e6, if you play bishop c5 and white plays bishop e3, uh, then you can play the move d4. Uh, so the difference is, let's say, uh, let's say my king was here. Bishop c5, bishop d3, you can play d4. In this position, after bishop c5, bishop e3, if I play the move d4, he can just take it. Bishop d4, bishop d4, and then he has rook to d1, winning the bishop back. You cannot defend the bishop. 
But in the game after castles, I did play bishop c5 because I, in my mind I had a completely different position. So one move out of my prep, basically out of the variation which I knew um, and played the tempo, I made a mistake and it was a stupid mistake. Uh, but as I said, it ended up being a good move. He did play bishop e3 and then I saw that I don't have d4 and I was frustrated. And uh, if I play bishop b6, which seems sensible, uh, then he has a lot of pressure with rook to d1, rook to e1, and I will have a hard time defending uh, my position. So I basically have to take. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Now white got rid of his weakness, but I do have something in, com in compensation. I have the e-file for my king with without being pressured by rook to e1. And I have the c-file, which I took immediately, rook a to c8. And now... Uh, I was actually happy, and now I can understand why bishop c5 was a good move, uh, because you get to take the c-file, and rook to c2 is a serious threat. If he plays rook f2, then rook h to c8 will once again take the c-file for black. He played rook a, a to d1, king e6, rook to f2, uh, trying to double attack the pawn, and now rook h to d8. And now there's a constant threat of, uh, after rook f to d2, of e4, where if I take, he takes my rook because it's undefended. If I push, he takes twice. So I have to play rook to c7 so that I can meet e4 with rook c to d7, and then everything is defended. I have three defenders. And another thing is that if after rook to c7 he plays e4, I can also take it because now my rook is defended twice. So here he played king to f2, and uh, I spent a long time considering the move g5, uh, stopping uh, f4, and I spent a long time considering f5, stopping e4. So I ended up playing f5, and he played h4. And my next move I thought was okay, and Mate thought that uh, it was a mistake and that it was too passive. He, he criticized me and he told me that I seem to be defending uh, throughout this middle game, well, ending, basically. And they play the move g6. Uh, the reason for g6 is that if h4 comes, I can now play g5. If h4 came when my pawn was on g7, then g5 could be met by Ampasan. So, so now I thought my kingside structure was secure. And also, uh, after king to g3, which he played, I now have king to e5. He can never enter the f4 square, which is my only weakness. And if he ever plays f4, then I can move my king safely away. Uh, the obvious thing is that he has an advantage on the queen side. He has a 2 to 1 pawn majority, but I do control the c file somewhat, and I can also put pressure on the pawns. So I thought that this position was perfectly equal. And around this point, uh, Mate uh, told me, I was walking, looking at the other games, he told me, offer a draw. And uh, I wasn't really pleased with that, but I decided to listen to him. I mean, I have to listen to him. He is the team captain. So I offered the draw, and uh, my opponent said, no, no, thank you. So I said, okay. Uh, and I knew that the position is pretty drawing. It should be completely equal according to the engines, but he wanted to fight because he is high rated. So, okay. Uh, here he continued with rook to d4, trying to lock down my position, and I played rook to c2. Uh, rook to b4, putting pressure on uh, my 7th rank, trying to infiltrate on b7. If I allow that, then of course I am worse. But now, uh, I don't want to play rook to d7, that seemed too passive, but rook d to c8. Now, any rook to b7 can be met by rook to c7, any rook to b5 can be met by rook to c5. And I'm defending everything, not allowing his rook to enter. And the best thing is that if he ever moves his rook from the b-file, then the b2 pawn is hanging. So he did play rook b5, Rook 8 to c8 to c5. Rook takes, rook takes, and now he played rook d4 once again. Uh, I decided to continue with rook to b5 after a long think, uh, trying to provoke either b3 uh, or b4. He played b4, and now the, the, the only move, basically, for me is a5. If I allow a4, then I am worse. After a5, he needs to react. Now, if he plays a4, I can take here. He defended with a3, and now the, the position is pretty dead. Uh, there really isn't much either of us can do. Uh, my only break is g5, so I decided to test him on the king side, h6. And now he went for uh, f4 check, uh, locking down g5, which was a good decision. Now, if I play king f6, I have g5. If I play king d6, I'm closer to the queen side. Uh, I decided to play king f6 because he, his hands are going to be tied to, to my position if he's not careful. King f3 was played, and now a b4, an exchange, a b4, and g5. h g5, h g5, f g5, check, king takes g5. And now we come to the critical position in this ending, which I have calculated for a long time. I actually spent all my time, had maybe about 10 minutes left here, um, 
but you get this is a game in uh, 90 and uh, you get 30 seconds per move and after move 40 you get another half an hour and this was move 36 so i was pretty confident that i was going to, to have another half an hour so now the the position is he wants to get to b3 and then to a4 remove my rook from b4 and then march his b pawn up the board well at the same time the position is locked here and i cannot push my pawns through uh, the thing that he probably missed, uh, which I saw immediately, is that once the king gets to b3, and my king is going to be defending both pawns from e5, uh, because while he marches he, his king to b3, I'm going to march my king to, to e5. As soon as he plays king to b3, I have rook to b8, and to any rook, uh, king a4, I have rook to a8 check, forcing his king back. So that's exactly what happened. Uh, rook e2, king f6, rook d3, uh, I'm sorry, king d3, king e6, king c3, king d6, rook f4, have to defend king e5, and now king b3. And now the critical position, I play rook to b8, he plays king to a4, I check him, and he simply needs to go back. The variation should go king b3, rook b8, king a4, rook a8, check, and there's there's nothing either of us can do. The position is completely locked. I can never push my pawn because he takes with the rook. He can never move his king forward because I play rook to a3. He needs to go back. But in this position, after rook a4, rook a8 check, he played king b5, and I was astonished. And I, I thought he was losing immediately, but in fact, um, he, had, he had a chance to draw. I played rook to a3. And now he, of course, has to defend. He needs to play rook f3, and once I push my king to attack his rook, he needs to take here, uh, and I need to... No, I'm sorry, wait. After here... After king here... Yeah, he needs to check me here. That's the move. And I take here, he takes here, and this is a draw. This position is a dead draw. There's there's no way for, for either of us to win. However, after king to b5... Uh, Rook to a3, he played an, an incredibly bad blunder. He played uh, he played rook to f1, and now it's just game over. It's game over. Rook takes e3, and he doesn't have time to queen his pawns. I'm going to make two queens. Rook b1 was played, f4, king c6, f3. Uh, in this position, the PGN uh, online actually ends, perhaps. Uh, we were playing on a digital board, and it went live online. I'm not sure why why the other moves are not here. But the position went uh, b5, uh, f2, he played rook to f1. And now I play it precisely. Uh, I need to gain a tempo on his king, and I need to defend my pawn. Defending passively like this would give, would give him another tempo. And I need to accomplish three things. Defend my pawn, attack his pawn, and chase his king away. So the only move uh, which I played was rook to f6 if he goes to the b uh, rook, rook to uh, c3 i'm sorry if he goes to the b file then he has to waste another tempo moving his pawn uh, if he goes here then he needs to waste another tempo defending his pawn uh, he did go to d2 now i first defend my pawn uh, he pushes his pawn i played rook to b uh, to b2 uh, he played king to King to c2 or king to uh, king to king to c7 or king to c6. I'm not sure. I played king. No, he played he played king to c to c6 to attack my d4 pawn. King to c6. Uh, king here. Uh, he pushed b7. I played king to e3, and now I'm going to win. And now he found the tricky move. He played rook to a1. Uh, now if I uh, march my king to e7. If I play king e7, then he has rook to a2, and this is a tricky position. And now I, I have to take he queens and I queen. And I mean, it's winning, but he has a queen. But after, uh, in this position, uh, rook to a1, uh, I saw that rook to a2 is a threat, so I just didn't move my king here. I simply played d4, and he resigned. Of course, uh, if he ever, if he has three more moves to queen his pawn, uh, or whatever, I'm still going to get two queens, so the variation could go like this. Takes, takes, king takes, and now whatever he does, I'm just going to make two queens. And that's it. So I ended up winning a game I shouldn't have won. Uh, in this position, after the after the theory ends uh, in the pan of somewhere around here, where he castled, the position is equal, and it should be a draw, and... Uh, Mati didn't want me to risk anything. I felt like I weren't risking anything because it's an even position. 
but my opponent badly wanted to win and uh, that made him blunder and they won so yeah uh, ended up being an amazing tournament we actually beat their team 4-0 and uh, we came into round six with eight match points out of ten we fought for the first place and the amazing thing happened that six teams had eight match points which was incredible and six teams were basically fighting for the first three spots which win uh, prize money and uh, cups and whatever uh, you already know, yeah, we drew uh, the highest, uh, the, the best team at the tournament, basically in uh, in round six, and we lost 3-1, but still a great tournament. So this game, I don't know which lesson to draw. I couldn't help thinking that uh, in this position, after yeah, after king to b3, rook to b8, king to a4, rook to a8, if my opponent was playing somebody higher rated than him, then he would definitely play king to b3. I mean, there's no question about it. But against me, because I'm lower rated, he badly wanted to win, so he screwed up. What can you do? Uh, so anyway, uh, a great tournament. I ended up winning 27 rating points, so I'm finally over uh, 1900. And... Uh, my next tournament is going to be uh, the Zagreb Championship, which starts in about uh, 12 days. It's going to be a rough tournament, going to be one of the lower rated players, of course. And I'll have to prepare for that uh, in, the next, in the next 12 days, hopefully do well. Uh, until then, until, the, until June 3rd, when the tournament starts, I'm going to be uh, finishing up the E4 series and I'm going to finally start D4 and... Uh, D4 series and the Endgame series. I would just like to uh, thank you for the support, uh, whoever has been helping. Uh, it means a lot. Thank you for the kind comments and uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for everything. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you like the game. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you play the Panov. This is definitely a variation you can pick up. And uh, stay tuned for more chess. Bye bye. Thanks.